close your eyes and imagine yourself in a foreign country. Beautiful mountains surround you. A road extends for miles in either direction. You hear the purr of a diesel engine as you look to your right and you see the people you care about most, your friends and your family. When all of a sudden, the concussive blast pierces your rib cage, your ears ringing, and everything around you goes brown. That is the experience of being hit by an improvised explosive device, or IED, otherwise known as a roadside bomb. My name is David Shade. I'm a combat veteran. I'm a paratrooper. I'm a CEO, an entrepreneur, and a professional dog trainer. And that's exactly what happened on August 11th, 2007 in Afghanistan when the lead vehicle of our platoon was struck by one of these IEDs. Now, I was the driver of the lead vehicle in this platoon. But on the one day that I wasn't was that day. Because a game of rock, paper, scissors decided that my crew would get to go for hot chow and a hot shower. Unfortunately, on that day, my friend Corporal Good was killed, died from his wounds as that explosion opened up the vehicle like a can opener and ejected the crew members. He was in my seat that day. A month later, we had a vehicle breakdown at the bottom of a wadi, which is like a dried out riverbed. We had to get the vehicle back to base. We had to get it for repairs. So I hooked the vehicle up to mine and we began towing. We got ambushed by the nearby mountainside where a dozen enemy fighters opened up fire on our platoon. Every single truck had bullet holes in the side of every single vehicle. Every single window and every single antenna was hit with a bullet. The volume of the gunfire was out of this world. As I was driving and trying to tow this truck, an RPG, a rocket-propelled grenade, went screaming across the hood of my vehicle. There was a pool of fire in the road up ahead, something out of a Hollywood movie. But it wasn't. This was war. A month later, my vehicle was struck by an IED. You can see in the picture where I was sitting and the crater that was two feet deep underneath my feet. When we got hit with this IED, my gunner fell down to the hatch and he was wounded. You can see me standing there in the one picture holding his IV bag. He had to get sent home. A month later, I got hit again. Catastrophic destruction to the vehicle. This time I was in the gun. I was bracing myself to try to avoid to get ejected in the event of us hitting an IED. But when the IED went off, I fell down into the cockpit. I blew out my knees on the radio mounts, and I bit the sides of my tongue off. Now, I'm not a doctor, but for a 19-year-old kid, how do you survive that trauma? This is why so many veterans are struggling with post-traumatic stress because they're unable to recover from the trauma that we're sending these young boys overseas. In addition to that, the Army trains us not to have empathy. How can I be a good war fighter if I care about the other guy's family? Personally, I took it a step further. I numbed myself emotionally to such a degree that I had to accept the fact that I was already dead. 
And by doing that, I was an effective fighter. However, this comes at a cost. And that cost I experienced when I came back home. Dealing with post-traumatic stress is like you're in a deep, dark pit and you can't get out of it. No one to talk to, no way to climb out, no lifelines. I always wanted to have a dog. And my parents didn't think I was ready, and they were probably right. But I said, well, I'm back home now. Now's, now's my time. I'm an adult. I live on my own. I'll get my own dog. And that's when Lulu came into my life. Lulu came into my life as a puppy. Lulu earned a nickname very quickly. Poop Factory. Uh, puppies are little poop factories. And I learned this lesson the hard way. The very first night, trying to sleep, and I wake up, what's this smell? Puppy poop. And I was up there, three in the morning, on my hands and knees, scrubbing the floor, about to lose my mind. A year ago, I was fighting in a war, and this puppy brought me to my knees. But that day passed, and the next day, and the next day. And a bond began to develop with me and this unassuming animal. She helped me. I was on my own. If I had to go to sleep, who was on guard duty? Well, Lulu would let me know if someone was approaching the house, if I was in danger, so I could ready myself. She taught me how to control my anger. Because if I got angry, she would run away. Which taught me to reel it in. Lulu taught me how to live again. How to love again. And how to feel again. So, what if every veteran returning home from war was given a dog? What if, complementary to their traditional care, they were given a friend? We know that there's over 3 million post 9-11 veterans. And we know that over 3 million dogs are surrendered to US animal shelters each year. What if we could save the life of a veteran by saving the life of a dog. I'm not a mathematician, but I've done the math. You know, there's a, a memory that I'll never forget with Lulu. Uh, shortly after I first got her, I took her to her favorite hill where she loved to play fetch. I was sitting on the top of that hill with her as the sun was setting and I thought to myself, everything's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. So what if? Thank you.